In this third video, we are going to understand the logic behind the wheel exercises. Before doing any wheel exercise, it's important to understand it, rather than doing the exercise blindly just for the sake of doing them. And this will bring you no fruits and no wheel connection or any increase in your willpower. So you need to understand how it works before doing anything. To follow the way of the wheel and become a magnetic person, you already know that you cannot reactively move through the world. That's the behavior of an animal. It's an entirely unconscious way of living. Animals react to the external or internal stimuli without an awareness of what they generally want to be doing. There is no connection to the will involving their behavior since they are simply reacting. And oftentimes, we behave exactly like that, just like we discussed in our last video. Our behavior in the world is simply a reaction to external or internal stimuli. An impulse in our body tells us that we need sugar, so we eat candy. Our emotions tell us to be mad, and so we become angry. Our mind tells us to believe in something, so we do it. There is little awareness and little conscious decision through your will. Just a reaction. But to become generally magnetic, you need to start acting in the world instead of reacting. And this implies first an awareness over your lower self impulses, and then establishing a conscious intention and following through on it. Reacting can only lead to unconscious behaviors and actions. Not the way of the will, nor the way of a magnetic individual. But instead, when you act instead of react, you are aware of your actions, and you need to position yourself in a conscious decision. You are no longer blindly following your lower animal impulses, your body, emotions, or mind. Instead, you are choosing to follow your will. And that's what's establishing your true will. And naturally, as everything with the will, the more you become aware of your lower self impulses without immediately acting on them and then establish conscious intentions and behaviors, the stronger and more connected you become to your will. So it's a cycle, but this way is uplifting. Instead, it could be a vicious cycle if you establish intentions and don't follow through on them, or you simply continue to react to your lower self impulses. They can be cyclical and automatically as well. But they won't be necessarily good for you, since this way your mind and your will start to neglect your word and your intention. It's no longer important or relevant to establish intentions, because everything in you knows that you're not going to follow through on them. The less you follow through on your word, the less will you will have. Just think about any friend that you have that constantly says that he's going to do something, yet rarely does it. How do you feel? Well. You no longer think that you will do it when he says something. You immediately discard whatever that he says and any commitment that he might do. The same thing happens with your mind. When you frequently say, even to yourself or to someone else, that you are going to do something that, and you won't do it, your mind starts to discard your word and your intention. It becomes harder and harder for your mind to obey you. So when you say that you want to do something, your mind will inevitably come up with other excuses, alternatives, and procrastinating impulses. So you become a slave to your mind rather than its master. And becoming its master can only happen when you frequently say that you are going to do something and you actually do it. So you establish a conscious intention and you follow through on it. Do it often enough and your mind stops sending you impulses to procrastinate because it already knows that you're not going to do it. It's futile. Your mind is a great slave but a terrible master. The more connected your word and awareness and your will are, the more empowered you will feel. But to consciously establish this intention and follow through on it, you need an active mental state, one that is observant and aware, rather than a passive state. You don't gain much by passively establishing the intention from your unconscious impulses two seconds before you do it. For example, Merely saying that you're going for a smoke, or I'm going to watch a Netflix series, or I'm watching YouTube videos, are not intentions coming from an active mind. They are intentions that come from a passive mind that is not thinking, reflecting, and aware. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that you cannot watch Netflix, or YouTube, or movies, or whatever that you want to do to relax. Just don't use it as an active intention two seconds before you do it, because it's not. Your mind needs to be aware active and observant for it to be a willful intention. A different example is, today after dinner I'm going to watch a Netflix movie. Much different, much different intention than when you know that you should be working on something and suddenly decide to procrastinate and do something else to do this lower self impulse. 
if you are just doing it automatically and change your mind often, then it's not a willful intention. A good barometer is, do you feel more empowered ever having done, after having done something, or do you feel weaker? Your energy won't lie. If you feel worse, if you feel weaker, you immediately know that you are fooling yourself. If you feel more empowered, if you feel more will, then you know that you are doing something right. So we discussed important principles until now. Acting versus reacting, active mental state, the power of your word. These principles must be followed in exercises as well. So let's look at them closely. Most likely you've come across exercise on willpower like sitting without moving for 30 minutes or looking at the hands of a watch for 15 minutes or counting all the matches in a matchbox. These, among others, are the traditional exercise on willpower that you can find in new thought books like William Walker Atkinson, Frank Haddock, and so on. And if you have tried them, you'll inevitably realize how boring they are. I mean, it's not a big stretch of imagination to think that counting a box of matches or looking at the hands of a watch is undoubtedly an incredibly dull activity. Most likely, you said to yourself after doing it, well, I can certainly push through it, and I can do it until the end, but it's so boring that I want to be repeating it. Or, you may even repeat them a few times, but certainly not consistently to grow your willpower. Once you convince yourself that you can push through the boredom and complete this exercise, you think your willpower is strong and the practices are unnecessary. Yet, these exercises actual value and their goal are far from completed and understood. Anyone can pull enough willpower to sit through 20 or 30 minutes of boredom. Sure, it's not fun, but anyone can do it and has done it in the past, especially if you have been to school or long business meetings. So you don't develop willpower to sit through a boring activity, just your ability to be bored during this time. The same thing with the exercises. So you can sustain 20 or 30 minutes of boredom. Well, good for you. You just proved to yourself that you could do what most teenagers do every day at school for several hours. And that's not a will exercise. It's simply enduring boredom, which you can be better or worse at it. If that's what you want to train, then great. Feel free to do it to improve your ability to withstand boredom. Otherwise, we need to go deeper. Once you understand that it's not the success in this exercise that matters, it's not being able to do it that matters, since we can all do it, then what's the point? What's the point of sitting through these boring exercises? It's not even about being able to do them every day, since, for this reason, might as well choose a more productive activity to force yourself to do it every day, like, for example, like running or weightlifting. Since, if the goal is simply to train your daily commitment, might as well do it with something useful. The point of this training is to understand and control your state and the different lower self impulses. We can all go through these exercises, but we can't all go through them consistently with an empowering state, becoming aware of our impulses and generally connected with our will with an active mind. A teenager in school finishes his boring class with a dull mind, a mind that is not active or powerful, but just bored and happy that the classes are over, so he can start doing more fun activities. If you finish this exercise with the same mental state, then, as you can imagine, the will exercises didn't have a good effect on you. They may even worsen your mental state. But after you finish these will exercises, you need to feel much more aware, much more powerful and empowered due to the continual use of the will and not feel bored out of your mind. If this doesn't happen, then you are not accomplishing the goal of these exercises. It's pointless to go through it. You must do them empowered, and not disempowered and forced because someone from YouTube told you to. You are not pushing yourself. You are choosing to apply your will to do it. And because of this, your mind rewards you with a very empowered state. Like most people who read these exercises, I didn't understand them at first. They were boring. But I kept doing them to prove that I could. Still, at some point, you know you can do this for the rest of your life, but what's the point? Nothing truly changed. So why waste any more time? So after connecting the dots on all kinds of situations, it was only much later that I understood their true meaning and why what I'd done for probably hundreds of hours was nothing more than a waste of time. If you are not doing them using your will, using or developing a powerful state from the beginning to the end of the exercise, and finishing up feeling more empowered than you were before, 
then you might as well not do them and do some fun activity instead. You will be wasting your time. The true goal of this exercise is to learn to control your state, developing an active mental state, becoming aware of your lower self impulses and connecting to the will and choosing what you want to do. It may be apparently tedious at the surface level, but you should be brimming with power. And for this to happen, it requires a good internal awareness, a solid inner voice control, a non-leaning approach to the exercise and a genuine connection to your will source. You'll need to change your state from a bored out of your mind, which is the normal reaction that you may have when doing this exercise, into a powerful one using all these approaches. The internal awareness that you can become aware of your impulses that are pulling you to do something else, the inner voice control so you can reflect away all the negativity and power drainers that are happening inside of you and your mind's voice, and a non-leaning, non-resistant approach to the exercise so you can develop a fully present state. And with the connection with your true will, you can dissociate from the illusions of the emotions of boredom while connecting with the true power inside. All these topics are fully covered in a 10 steps to inner power course and particularly will mastery, where you can genuinely understand the will on a deeper level, much more than we can develop here in just a few videos. Still, you can now apply them and train them with just any simple exercise of willpower like counting the matches of a matchbox. Something as simple as this can be a powerful way to enter an empowered state when done right. Of course, you could do the same thing with any kind of useful task, like any work that you need to do. But the goal of this exercise is the awareness. Because in it, your mind has the freedom to become aware of your internal sensations, while if you are attempting to do it in any useful activity, just like any work that you may be doing, your mind will be much more focused in whatever you are doing rather than the internal awareness. That's why we choose these dull activities like counting matches. It's a fairly automatic and internal activity and there's no other distraction other than yourself. When done wrong, they are really a terrible waste of time and just a way to be bored. Not much different than being in a boring lecture or a business meeting. Being aware of your impulses and energy while controlling your internal state and connecting with your will is the difference between this being a waste of time or a powerful exercise. The only true way of knowing if you are doing them correctly is when you can consistently do these willpower exercises and end up in an empowered state, much stronger than you were before, and you start to become aware of the different lower self impulses that you feel. They will all pop up in these dull activities. So feel them, integrate them as we discussed in the last video, and continue connecting with your will. Then you can say that you have reached the goal of these exercises. And by the way, consistently it's not just doing it once or twice. It's a daily practice for several weeks and months, finishing the exercise more powerful and aware than you were before, bringing this state to the rest of your day. If this is achieved, then you have accomplished a fundamental goal. When you do this daily, you'll have to fight off your daily moods of not feeling good or being sad or angry or feeling like doing something else. In short, all the lower self impulses. Hence, the consistency of the exercise and not just being it a once or twice activity when you're feeling full of power and motivation anyway. Which beats the point of the willpower exercise as your internal eye energy will naturally override the lower self. So if you are already full of power and motivation, then it's not really a big effort, is it? But if you're moody for some reason, you don't feel like it. This is where you'll need your full inner power internal awareness to control your state and your impulses. Of course, for that, you need to achieve a good understanding of your own inner self, depending on your awareness. All these exercises can work as a mirror. How do your inner voice works? What does it say when you are doing this exercise? What voice is telling you to drop all this and go do something more fun? What is encouraging you to stay on? Which one are you listening to? The same with energy. What are you feeling? What is making you drop everything? What do you feel when you want to continue? What are your impulses? what else is catching your attention, and so on. These exercises are great opportunities to understand what is inside of you. On the next video, you'll have several willpower exercises where you can apply these concepts.